Thank you and good evening everyone. I'm delighted to be here. So I uh, always wanted to make sure that corporate companies are citizens of this world. And uh, this is why today I'm leading on sustainability and also working on the workforce of the future skills. And I always wondered uh, where it came from. Um, and I don't know about you, but I always look at my family uh, when I want to learn about my motivations and where I come from, what, what I do. Um, and actually, I look at my parents. Uh, we're both in the medical profession and also my grandparents because, um, and you might have some people like this in your family. My grandparents always looked at uh, saving uh, plastic bags, plastic boxes, growing their own vegetable and fruit and uh, I was thinking, that's probably because they want to save money. But now I realized today that it was also because they really wanted to make sure that they, leave the, they left the planet in a better uh, shape than uh, where, where they started from. So for me, uh, today, it's a pleasure to talk about uh, a topic that is really close to my heart. And I think which is related, which is both sustainability and skills. Because I believe that for a resilient future, uh, and I'm so hopeful to see so many young faces today in the audience. We need to build these skills that are going to help make this planet a better place for us. Uh, but because of the, the, the topic of the talk today, I know I had to start with adversity um, because it's something that we have to acknowledge. And you probably all know about um, David, Sir David Attenborough, uh, who is a lifelong environmentalist and a broadcaster as well. And um, he, he always talks, you know, truth to power and is always very direct. Um, so you can see here uh, a quote that he recently uh, gave to show us that um, we are, you know, close to extinction. Uh, if we don't act now, all the species around the world are going to disappear and it's better to acknowledge the problem and work through it. So I want to move on quickly, and, uh, but I, I also wanted to, uh, to mention the IPCC report, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, which did something similar in the last few weeks uh, because they believe, all the scientists working on this panel, that we have a very short window of opportunity for us to continue living on a, on a livable planet. Uh, but that's enough for, for uh, adversity because um, I think, as many people have said today, when you have darkness, you also want to look for light and I believe that uh, uh, sustainability is, is in our power. Uh, so don't believe that because you are a business, a business uh, uh, student uh, or you are an artist or an accountant, you can't work on sustainability. Um, it's in our power to do uh, little things, big things together uh, to make a change. And um, very early on in 1992, uh, uh, scientists and the uh, community of NGOs and governments came together to define what sustainability is. And um, I know a lot of you have already studied this topic, but I also wanted to uh, really burst the myth that sustainability is only about environment, uh, because it is about leaving your planet in a better shape than what you, uh, uh, how you received it, basically. Uh, so uh, really early on in 1992 at the Rio summit, uh, it was made clear that you have to work on sustainable solutions uh, to leave uh, this planet in a, in a better shape for future generations. So everything you think about um, uh, has to make sure that you are leaving a smaller footprint on the environment, uh, but also creating a, a more equal society, more cohesive communities. Uh, so I think it's, it's important to know that in everything you do, um, you, you can act on sustainability. And as you will probably know, sustainability has three key pillars. So of course, the environmental one, which is very important because we know that a lot of species have already uh, um, disappeared and we have water pollution, scarcity of resources. But you also have uh, an economic pillar because without a, a society with a healthy economy, uh, you know, our world will not be able to develop properly. And there's also a societal pillar to sustainability because you want to ensure that there's gender equality in the world, in the company you work with, or in your university. You want to ensure that a lot of people have similar opportunities, even when they come from um, underrepresented backgrounds. And all these different challenges and opportunities are linked. So if you've got poor climate, um, disasters, uh, people will be displaced, 
um, women and girls will not be able to go to school and etc. So it's a, it's a circle. So you make you have to make sure that we all work together on these three pillars. And if there's one uh, very important skill that I want you to leave with today is uh, to learn more about and be more curious about sustainability. And one way to do that is looking at the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which are 17 different goals that the UN has said we need to reach by 2030. So I know it's easier to have a, a framework to know uh, that we can rely on something concrete to make small changes or bigger changes. And these 17 US SDGs, uh, uh, as uh, we call them in short, uh, touch on the three different pillars of sustainability. So you have something, for instance, around poverty, something around life on Earth, life below water. You've got um, topics such as sustainable uh, communities, or sustainable production and consumption partnerships. So th there's a really broad range of uh, different actions that we can all do. And I think uh, you, can, you might think, you know, me making a small step might not make a big difference, uh, but I just want to share with you an anecdote around my own children. They're six and, and 12. And one day they came to me and said, mommy, we, we don't want to uh, have any bath. That's it, we stop it. I'm like, mm, really? <laughs> But then they said, it's because it's not sustainable. And I went, OK, so we just <laughs> agreed on a very short shower. <laughs> so I think if you look at the, the different sustainability development goals and think about what you can do yourself, don't think and don't let anybody think that it doesn't make any difference. You can make a difference because by becoming this change agent in your everyday life, in your university life, in your future employment, you will make others change as well. And I think becoming change agents is extremely powerful and humbling and, and really rewarding as well. So if you think about the sustainable development goal around poverty, uh, a simple thing you can do is all these clothes and shoes that you have in the corner of a room, don't let them sit there. Just donate them because you know that somebody else will use them, especially if in, in they're still in the great condition. Water, just take a shower instead of a bath. Take it from my children. Um, sustainable communities, switch to walking, taking the bus, cycling to your university, to your work. Um, it's all these small steps that will make others as well look and think about what they do. Uh, so I'm sure you will have other examples, uh, but I think it's very important to think that small steps can also do big differences. Now for the skills. So you will tell me that um, you have seen the skills that are on the screen a few times when you think about um, uh, registering for a course or volunteering. Uh, or uh, even uh, looking for a new job. And I'm sure you've seen them before, you know what they are, but I also wanted to put them in the context of sustainability because I think that these are very important in the, uh, in the framework of making your lifestyle, um, our environment, our society more sustainable. And the first one is around collaboration. Um, I think we all know that uh, this event wouldn't have been possible without a lot of people working together. And I think if you, whenever you go into a place of work or a, a volunteering opportunity or a university course, you have to make sure you break silos, you work with different types of people uh, because they will bring to you uh, what you don't know, especially with problems that are linked to sustainability, which are extremely complex because they are all interconnected connected, working with others uh, will be a, a, great, um, a, a great asset. And we all live through the pandemic. And uh, I know we all had to work uh, across Zoom and we all had to live in an hybrid environment. And that's where collaboration and working with people uh, in a very close uh, uh, manner is very important. So for me, the second uh, skill that is also very important is around uh, the network building. And I know this event allowed this today, and it's really a, a joyful occasion when people can uh, come from different horizons and exchange. And I think this is something that can also help with collaboration. So you learn to know different people, people that you meet um, at your church, in your, uh, during your sports activities, and they bring something different to you. They can inspire you and give you other ideas like you are doing today, learning from others. 
Um, and I think uh, it's a great way to maybe work in the future with some people that you have met, you know, in your childhood at university and that you think you can come back to. Uh, so please uh, ensure that you widen your network, that you are interested and curious in other people because that you will always get something back. The third skill I wanted to talk to you about is about influencing. So influencing for me is one of the best things that you can do because there's an, a, an argument about you being better. Of course, if you have to influence, it means that you have to go against some um, uh, prejudice or try to convince someone that uh, doesn't have the same idea as you. But what you can do is also arm yourself with the right arguments, the right knowledge. Because if you have to influence something, it means that you have to know your topic, you have to feel confident, you have to do your research. So in a way, for me, it's the best way uh, to also increase your own knowledge, your own confidence, because by influence, influencing others, you just want to be a better version of yourself and you want to know, um, you know the, the, the problems that have been identified and research the solutions. So please be brave and ensure that you can influence by doing your homework, rehearsing, researching, talking to others. And it's particularly important in the sustainability topic because you still have some people who are skeptical, you still have some people who want to keep the status quo. And I think it's important that you question and try to influence. For me, the, the fourth uh, really key skills when it comes to sustainability link is linked to problem solving and strategic thinking. So as you know, sustainability has uh, consequences for education, for ec the economic development of our countries, uh, for the, the state of the planet. And I think uh, using problem solving skills is very important for these complex uh, uh, challenges, but it also allows you to see the bigger picture. Uh, so um, we talked earlier about the, the life cycle and the circularity of the economy, of the products we design, of the processes we think about. And I think it's very important to see the bigger picture. So you, you will probably all go and do bigger things once you finish your studies or go and create a startup. And I think it's very important to think in terms of life cycle. So when I start a project, when I want to create a product, a process, a service, what will he do now and what will he do later? What kind of legacy will I leave? And do, do, do I create more pollution now for later? What in 20 years times will happen to, to, my, to my project? So please think in terms of life cycle because it helps you have a better overview of where your products, where your ideas are going to end up. And you know, going back to the generation, we want, you want the children of your children to feel that you know, this was the right legacy uh, to leave. And um, for me, sometimes looking at um, the short-term high costs of a, of, of, of a project or a product or a choice uh, has to be counterbalanced with the longer-term benefits uh, of that decision. So when, when you think that people are wanting to take hasty decisions or want to look at short-term uh, consequences, it would be good if you were in the room and you always ask them, you know, what if, what the long-term consequences of this decision would be? How do we make sure that we have a, a strong legacy? So I, I know it's not easy to do, but it's, a, it's like a habit, a muscle that you need to work on. And finally, the last one for me is around digital. Uh, I know that you're all digital uh, natives and only a few of us <laughs> have grown with a, an iPad uh, at the end of our hand. But um, I want to encourage you to use digital not only to learn faster, to be more efficient at what you do, to just focus on the key topics, but also to think about other ways about how digital can help sustainability. So my company, Dasso System, we work in virtual technology. And what we do is we help companies design their products, for instance, in 3D. And there's a lot of power in that. Uh, so if you get your first job with a, a big company um, developing high tech or cosmetics, uh, think about how designing it in the virtual world can help save money, time, but also waste. Because if you design something in the virtual world, you don't have to do a lot of prototyping, wasting a lot of uh, energy and resources in the real world. If I take the example of, of uh, electric cars, you can do a lot of car crashes in a virtual world through simulation tools, and then it means that you don't have to have the real prototype being crashed over and over to make sure it, uh, we ensure that safety. And it's based on data-driven decisions. Uh, so think about the way you know digital can help you uh, take better decisions. And going back to the life cycle um, analysis as well around products, um, we also have this tool 
uh, around life cycle analysis, which allows you to design a product with sustainability by nature at its heart. Uh, I recently did a course around sustainability, and um, the one fact that really stayed with me, and that I think almost every day, is that the um, environmental of a, uh, uh, impact of a product is decided at the design phase at, eight, at a level of 80%. So if you design a product that is sustainable uh, from when you design it, when you choose the materials, when you decide on the supply chain, when you decide on its recyclability, you will have solved 80% of the sustainability challenge around this product. So please think about digital in much more than a way to learn faster, to communicate faster, because it has a lot of different applications that will make you in a more, more sustainable uh, uh, people and more sustainable change agents. So I wanted to finish on a story. Uh, because um, for me, this, this teenager that you can see on the screen uh, epitomizes uh, and encapsulates all the five digital and problem solving and collaboration and influencing skills uh, that I've just described. It's the story of Boyan Slat, uh, who was a, a Dutch teenager who really enjoyed uh, scuba diving. So he went uh, with his parents when he was 16 years old to Greece and decided to scuba dive. And he was really shocked uh, when he realized that uh, what he saw in the sea were more plastic bags than fish. And he, he asked himself, you know, what can I do? How can we clean this up? It's not possible that we stay in this, in, in this um, uh, environment where you've got more plastic bags than turtles and fish. So he asked this question to himself and then decided to create a, a school project around it uh, and also to think about what he could learn around plastic pollution. So he learned about the really big five ocean uh, areas in the world uh, that have a, 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 a big problem with debris and pollution. One of them is the, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Um, and he continued researching and um, so that he could use technology uh, to clean up the ocean. So in 2012, he did a, a TED talk that attracted a lot of attention. And of course, he used the, the networking element, the collaboration. Um, and um, we were one of the companies that helped him. And the machine you can see on the screen was designed using our 3D software to make sure that uh, it could be aerodynamic, it could recycle the, and, and collect the plastic in the ocean. And so he managed to leave school to found uh, the ocean cleanup uh, startup and uh, to really keep thinking about what else it could do. And a bit later on, after a lot of iteration, development and collaboration, he transformed this machine into a smaller machine that could also go on the rivers because you realize that you have to intercept the waste before it goes in the ocean. And so the, the, the second version of this machine was a smaller version that could intercept the waste from the rivers directly before it went into the oceans. And uh, he also helped uh, treat the waste that was already in the ocean that had been there lying for 10, 20 years. So for me, this is a truly inspirational leader, somebody uh, who was used the five skills I just described earlier and uh, was brave enough to say, I've got an idea and I'm going to try to make uh, my uh, little contribution to the world. So I hope it, uh, it really gets you thinking and that uh, you, uh, you will realize that there's no small step. Um, and I just want to leave you with one piece of advice that really resonated with me when I read it a few weeks ago. Don't strive to be happy, just strive to be good because it will probably make you very happy. Thank you for your attention.